In this example, we're going to construct parallel box plots. I have that word in bold right here. When you hear parallel box plots, it means that we're gonna make more than one box plot at the same time. So in the previous example, we just did the one box plot. Here, we're gonna make two box plots. And when you hear parallel, what that's saying is, typically we would write our x-axis in our box plot. If they're parallel, if you're writing more than one box plot and it's parallel, we just start stacking the box plots. So for this particular example, we have two sets of data, we're gonna stack two box plots on top of each other. If you had three sets of data, you would make three separate box plots. And again, they would be stacked, so they would run parallel. Uh, the way your calculator graphs them, they graph the box plots horizontally. It's also possible, there's plenty of times when we graph them vertically, just personal preference at that point. So when you hear parallel box plots, you're gonna make more than one box plot stacked on top of each other. Uh, you might hear them referred to as comparative box plots in the same way that we had comparative bar charts or comparative stem and leaf plots. Anytime we have more than one set of data, we wanna compare the two or maybe the three sets of data on a graph. All right, so we're gonna read through this problem and like always, I want us to start with what is the variable. So if we look at this, Emma and Daniel are surveying the times it takes students to arrive at school from home. There are two main groups of commuters who were in the survey. There were those who drove their own cars to school and there were those who took public transportation. The following data was collected. So we have some bus times and it looks like the units are minutes for a sample of folks who took public transportation. And then we have another set of data for the car times and it looks like we've got, uh, again, units are in minutes and a different set, of, different set of folks, different set of data. So we've got two different data sets in terms of what is my variable. All right. My variable here, yes, it says bus times and car times, but what are they doing? These folks are commuting to school. So this is school commute times. and the units are minutes, okay? Now, time, it's numerical, right? Continuous numerical variable, but you can see they're reporting it discreetly. We're just rounding to the nearest whole minute, which is fine, that's usually how we, how we report time. So it's asking me to construct parallel box plots and then compare the distributions using SOX. So let's answer the first part of this question first. <laughs> So we're gonna construct parallel box plots. And now that we know how to calculate outliers, we should always graph modified box plots. So we do need to do the outlier calculation before we, we start constructing these box plots. So if I'm gonna figure out if there are outliers present and I need to do it for each data set, I'm gonna to need to get those five number summaries and I'll need them for both data sets. So I'm gonna put my data into my list and do a little one var stats both for the bus times and for the car times. Now I already put my data in my list. You can see it there, I've got the bus times data in L1 and the car times data in L2. So let me go to my home screen and I need to run one variable stats twice. So if I take a look at this, we've got my five number summary for my bus times. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write that down on my paper here. All right, so just taking a look at my, my numbers, it looks like my spread is from 12 minutes to 33 minutes, um, median 17 minutes. So half the people took taking public transportation, um, their, their commute time was 17 minutes or longer. Half of the folks taking public transportation, half of their, or their commute time was 17 minutes or lower, or 17 to 12 minutes. Um, there's the cutoff for the 25th percentile, cutoff for the 17th percentile, not 17th, Sorry, I saw the number 17. Cut off for the 75th percentile. So let me go run this again, but now let me go off of L2. And what is my five number summary here? All right, let me copy that to my paper.
Okay, so with that, I need to go find some safety zones. So I'm gonna go through the safety zone for the bus times, and then I would recommend pausing it and try and get your safety zone for the car times on your own and then compare it to my answer. So here we go, anytime, let's do bus times, anytime I wanna find the safety zone. It's three steps, right? So the first step is find the IQR. IQR is always Q3 minus Q1. So again, where range was high minus low, interquartile range is high quartile minus low quartile. Now for the bus times, I'm looking at 22 minus 15. So I am looking at seven, okay? If I wanna to start to build the safety zone, step two is to always take this number, take your IQR and multiply it by 1.5. So we've got 1.5 times 7. I'm looking at 10.5. Okay. And then step three for your safety zone is to set your lower and upper bounds for your safety zone. And it comes from subtracting this number that you found in step two, subtract it from the first quartile or subtract it from the lower quartile and add it to the upper quartile. So I wanna take Q1 and lower the threshold by 10.5. And I wanna subtract out that number I found in step two. I also wanna raise the ceiling on the upper bounds threshold. So I'm gonna take Q3 and add 10.5. So again, to build from step two to step three, subtract this number from Q1, add it to Q3. Now, let's see what our Q1 was in this case. Q1 was 15. And I want to subtract 10.5. And Q3 was 22. And I want to add 10.5. So I am looking at a lower bound of 4.5 and an upper bound of 32.5. Here's my safety zone. Okay, so to determine if there are outliers, I'm gonna use the max and min to start. So it looks like the minimum bus time was 10 minutes. Actually, I don't think that was true. I think the minimum bus time was 12 minutes. I think I copied that down wrong from my calculator. All right, so the minimum was actually 12. Let me just check, 12, 15, 17, 22, 33. Okay, so that was a, a typo I made. All right, so the minimum was 12 minutes. So 12 minutes is inside the safety zone, meaning I have no outliers on the low end of my data. If I look at the max, it was 33. 33 is an outlier, so I'm gonna make sure I take note of that. All right, and then let's find the next highest commute time for the buses. I see 25, 25 is safe. So I don't have any other outliers in that data set, but I, one did pop up. I've got one uh, for th observation 33. All right, so with that, pause the tape and see if you can figure out if there are outliers present for the car times and then unpause the tape or unpause the video when you figured it out or you think you figured it out and check your work. We're gonna keep going. So let's do the same process now for the car times. So I get the IQR. What do we have for them? We have 13 minus 10, I'm looking at three. I'm gonna take that number, multiply it by 1.5. and I'm looking at 4.5. I'm going to lower the Q1 threshold, but raise the Q3 threshold. So we are looking at 10 minus 4.5 and 13 plus 4.5. So my safety zone is from 5.5 to 17.5. I should say my safety zone for the car times. All right, so let's use the max and min. The min is eight, eight is safe. 
the max is 17, 17 is safe, so there are no outliers in this data set. Alright, so now I want to start to actually construct my box plots. So I want to look at the overall max and the overall min between the two data sets so I can try and determine how I want to scale my x-axis. So if I look, it looks like the overall minimum is 8 and the overall max is 33. I feel like I could get that on an x-axis if I went by 5 units. So I'm going to go from 5 to about 35 on the x-axis, cover my bases there. Um, if you wanted to go by 10s, you could go from 0 to 40. That would be fine. I'm just opting for, for units of 5. So let me go draw my x-axis in here. And you do want to give yourself a little bit of space because we're going to stack box plots. I want to make sure I put my variable along the x-axis so we had school commute times and the units were minutes. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw our parallel box plots. Now what that means for us is that I'll put one box plot maybe this tall, this far above the x-axis, and I'll put the other one just slightly above my first one. And it doesn't matter what order you go in, you could put bus times on the top, car times on the bottom, you could put car times on the top, bus times on the bottom, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that you have just the one x-axis with the same scale. So I don't want to see two separate box plots on two different x-axes. You go ahead and you just stack them, that's what makes them parallel. So let me move this up just a bit, and let's start to do this. I think just because the bus time data was listed first, I'll put in the higher part, and I'll put car times on the lower. So in terms of bus times, um, I do want to remember there was an outlier in my data set, so I'm going to have to modify my box plot with the isolated dot. So here we go. Let's put them. All right, so we got 12. And then Q1 was 15. All right, so since I did have that outlier of 33, I want to go back through my data and find the largest non-outlier. If you remember from just a little bit uh, previously, we stated that was the number 25. So that's what I'm going to whisker out to. So I'll put a vertical bar there, and then 33 needs the isolated dot. So if I take a look, believe it or not, those five vertical bars, they, that can make my box plot. I will box the middle 50% of my data, and I will whisker out to non-outliers. So there's one of my box plots, and again, I, I like to write the numbers. I think it's helpful. What you also want to do, is, since we're going to make two box plots on the same scale, you want to tell me which set of data this was. This was for the bus times. Right? So I want to see bus labeled somewhere. So I know this box plot is for the bus data. All right, so for the car times, there were no outliers, so all I need to do is make five vertical bars with the five number summaries.
I will box my middle 50% and whisker out. Now these numbers will be a little crunched in, but I can do it. 8, 10, 11, 13, 17. And again, I want to opt to label that. So we've got bus against car. So I've got, I've got my set of comparative box plots or parallel box plots. So the takeaways here, I want you to realize when you have more than one set of data and I ask you to make box plots, start stacking them. Right? You, you can stack them horizontally like we did here, and your calculator does them horizontally, but plenty of folks go vertically, so I don't want you to think you couldn't do vertical box plots. It's just we go horizontal because it looks like the stuff on our calculator. When you make multiple box plots, again, you only have one x-axis. I don't want two separate graphs. Parallel box plots are stacking them. And the reason that we're stacking them is because we want to compare the two data sets. And if we look at our last set, of directions. You see I've got the the compare the box plots and the compare is in bold because again when you have two graphs that you're comparing whether it's stem and leaf plots, bar charts, box plots, histograms, whatever the case may be you need to use comparative language as you move through your socks. So you need to use phrases like larger than, smaller than, similar to, both, neither. I'm not so much interested in you quoting me the socks. I want you to compare the socks. That's why that word is in bold. So let's move this back up here and see if we can put some sentences together. So S, O, C, and S. So anytime you make me a graph, once you make that graph, you're going to owe me four sentences. All right. You're going to owe me a sentence about the shape about outliers, about center, and about the spread. So we're gonna work ourselves backwards in this, for this example, just because we first started with spread, we've moved to center, we've got outliers, we still don't have shape. I'll circle back around at the very end of this chapter and show you all the socks filled in for all of the graphs. But let's talk about this S here. Let's talk about spread. Now keep in mind, you can use spread, range, standard deviation, uh, variance or IQR. I'm, I'm going to use range in this case. So I'm just going to make some notes. I'll make them right over here. So I want us to look at the range for the bus times and compare it to the range of the car times. So for bus, it looks like it's going to be 33 minus 12. So let me go crunch that number. And we've got 21. The units on this would technically be minutes, so the range is 21 minutes for the bus times. The range for the car times is 8 minutes. So again, when it comes to writing up your sentences, if you have comparative graphs, whether that's a stem and leaf plot, a histogram, or box plots, use comparative language. So I don't want a sentence saying the range for the bus times was 21 minutes and the range for the car times was eight minutes. I want you to compare these two. So you could say the range for the bus times is larger than the range for the car times, or you could say the range for the car times is smaller than the range for the bus times. So again, I want comparative language. So I would say something like public transportation times, i.e. bus times, have a larger range than for those who drove. i.e. the car times. And I'm just putting these IEs here because if you wrote something, oops, excuse me. If you wrote bus times have a larger range than car times, that's great. If you wrote public transportation times have a larger range than for those who drove, great. If you wrote commute times for those taking the bus is larger than the commute times for those who drove, great. I don't want you to think there's only one answer. 
to these problems, but I do want us to put proper sentences together. All right, so again, you also could have done it the other way. You could have said um, the range for the car commute times is less than the range for the bus commute times. That would have been acceptable as well. All right, so there is us writing up our complete sentence for the S here, or the second S. Let's move back to center. So see, center, we can quote the mean or the median mode. When we get there, you could quote the mid-range. We're not there yet. But let's go ahead, just for ease, I'm going to quote the median. I already have both of them. We've got 17 and 11. So the median for the bus times is 17. The median for the car times is 11. Again, the units on this would have both been minutes. And I don't want you to just state what the, the centers are in your sentence. I want you to compare the sentences. So again, I'm seeing that the bus times have a larger median. So, so that's what I'm going to write, that the median commute time for those taking the bus was larger than the median commute time for those driving their car. That's a great sentence to write up. So we're getting there. We've got two of these done. We actually, we can talk about outliers now. We have enough number crunching under our belt to, to address outliers. So if I look at this, um, one data set had an outlier and one didn't, and that's what I want to report. So I will say there was an outlier present in the bus data, but not in the car data. excuse me, in the bus data. So if you take a look at the sentences I wrote here, and these would be the sentences I would be expecting on a midterm, there's no numbers quoted in any of these, right? You don't actually see the number 33 where the outlier was. You don't see anywhere in this sentence 17 or 11. You don't see anywhere in this sentence 21 and 8. When you have directions, and you have them here that say compare, oops, compare the distributions, I want you to use comparative language. So I want phrases like less than, smaller than, greater than, similar to, neither, both. I want you to compare what's going on with socks, not just quote them. All right, so two little tidbits. I've mentioned this throughout the chapter, but it's, it's good to get it officially down. So the term resistant statistic refers to a number that is unaffected by outliers. And the two that we have are the median and the IQR. The median is unaffected by outliers because this is your middle number and the IQR is unaffected by outliers because it is the middle 50% of your data. And anything happening in the middle is not affected by what's happening on the outside. And just to clarify, this is, this is implied, but it's, it's good to state out loud, the only data sets with standard deviations of zero are the data set with only one value. So imagine you had 9999999, okay? What would the median be here and what would the mean be? It would be nine, right? So the average here would be 9, because all the numbers are 9. Well, imagine what all of the deviations are. How much does this data value deviate from this mean? 0. What's the deviation of this data value? 0, 0, 0, 0. You can hear that all of the deviations are 0. That's why the standard deviation is 0. Right? They never deviate from the center, never deviate from the mean. Okay. So in a moment, I'm going to show you how we can do these parallel box plots on your calculator.
Hey gang, we're going to officially make some parallel box plots together. I touched on the idea in the last calculator video, if you saw it towards the end. And if you didn't, no problem, we're going to do it again here. So I want to make two box plots. I want them to be parallel, meaning that they're not touching. Um, you can make them horizontal, which your calculator always does. If you're doing them by hand, you also have the option of doing them vertically. Um, but let's go ahead and do some data entry. So I put my two data sets into my list, I put bus times in L1 car times in L2, great. You don't have to go in that order, it's just the order I went in. And then we need to go set up our stat plots, right? So data entry, set up your stat plots. If I'm looking right now, I can see I have plot one on, plot two and three are off. So if I look at plot one, it's making a modified box plot, great. It's got my data from L1, so I've got the bus times, that's good. What's not so hot right now is that I, I gotta get this plot uh, turned on and then I got to put the L2 data in there. So I'm going to scroll down to stat plot number two and I'm going to hit enter. And this is always a game of what's got the black background. That's what's live. So right now plot two is off. I want to turn it on. So I will hit enter and you'll see that plot two now has, excuse me, that on now has the black background. I also want to change the type. Um, this is a regular box plot and now that we have outliers we should always modify our box plots. And you want to be careful, don't hit the down arrow key here. If you hit the down arrow key, it'll jump you to that X list. So when you're in the types, if you want to get to the second row, you need to hit the right arrow key. So let me go over here. And again, I need to play the game of who's got the black background. So I will hit enter. And now you see that the black background is on the modified box plot. The other thing I want to change is I, I don't want to make another modified box plot of L1. I already have that. I need this to be the L2 data. All right. And you can choose what shape you want your outlier to be. Again, I always just go with the default. It's less to, to um, it's less buttons to push if you're really into it. We can do this. We could go push it to the plus sign. All right, once you get that going, let's hit zoom nine. And we should have our two parallel box plots. And there they are. So we've got the bus times here, the car times here. I could trace on either of those. So you see me tracing. Okay. highest non-outlier 25, that's good, that matches my graph here. There's my outlier at 33. That left and right will take you through this box plot. If you wanna jump down to the second box plot, hit the down arrow key. And you can see these calculator commands, right? You're on plot one and you're graphing the data from L1. If I hit the down arrow key, I'm in plot two and I'm looking at the data from L2. Okay. And I can scroll through all of those um, five number summaries in there, right? So for my computer parallel box plots here, I put the car times above the bus times. I think when I did it by hand, I did bus above car. On the calculator, I did bus above car. It doesn't matter which one goes on top, it's just that they both need to be on one x-axis. Right? So you see, I only made the one x-axis and I've got everything labeled and scaled properly. And if we scroll down here, right, I also showed you that if you have your calculator, right, you can go ahead and fill in that x-axis. We're talking about commute times and minutes. You do need to label which one was the bus data and which one was the car data. So if you're going to copy something from your calculator onto your paper for a midterm and it's a parallel box plot situation, you need to label for me which data set is which, okay? All right, thanks guys, we'll see you in a few.